So first of all, thank you for joining my presentation. My name is Alejandro Hernandez. Uh, my presentation's name is uh, Developing, Building, and Testing Your Bare Metal Applications Using the Octa Project and Open Embedded, the infrastructure, basically. Uh, and yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get started. So the outline of this presentation is the following. Um, I'll go through some multi-architecture embedded devices and why. Um, I'll go through the runtime testing infrastructure coming from Open Embedded, um, how, how it works already and what we're trying to do. And then I'm gonna go and explain a little bit about um, how, you can, how can you use the Octo project for uh, bare metal applications. And then at the very end, I'm, we're gonna go to uh, doing an actual application example and a test. Um, so first of all, there's, um, as, as time goes by, we, we, we see more and more devices that are multi-architecture or heterogeneous devices. Um, this is because it has a reason, right? Like you have, you can have several processors on, on, a, on, a, on a single embedded product. And it's because certain processors are uh, better fitted to do some tasks than others. So you usually have like, for example, in this device, which is the one that I work uh, with, it's the Azure Sphere device. And it has two processors. It has a uh, Cortex A7, for example, for Linux, and then a Cortex M4 for bare metal. So this is just an example. There's there's several of these, and you can see it how the trend is uh, to create these kind of devices. Um, so yeah, the open embedded runtime testing infrastructure. So that's I, I want to point out that this is. Um, this happens every day on the auto builder for the Octo project. Every single day, um, several architectures are tested on, on Linux on the Pocky distribution. So this is something that happens every single day and it's how we in the Octo project get our test results and get um, how our system, the, the quality of our system basically. Um, so how does this work? The, if you wanted to test a Linux OS, um, then the way it works right now is that um, you can either do QMU, you can do hardware as well. In this example that I'm showing here, this is uh, on my local.conf, and I'm inheriting the uh, test image class. Uh, I'm setting the target as QMU, and I'm setting the test suites as auto, which which is a, a you know a good number of tests that will give you a good idea of how um, your system is looking uh, on a certain day. Um, you can specify, for example, a simple remote, um, which, uh, on which you can specify an IP address for your device, and then the test will be done through SSH, um, if that's what you want. Um, on test suites, for example, one important thing is that you can specify, uh, uh, per case basis. So, for example, you could put ping, SSH, SCP, or parse logs. Those are four tests that I can use as an example. Those are located on the meta directory, live OEQA runtime, and then cases directory. So if you go into that directory, you can see um, a, a file per test um, usually, um, where, and you can find, oh, the ping test exists so that I can, I can do and test that now. Um, it's important to point out as well that the order matters because they have dependencies between them. So for example, uh, in the example that I'm putting, putting there, it there, it's uh, I put SCP, ping, and SSH. And what's going to happen in that case is that SCP is going to be skipped, and then ping is going to be run, and SSH is going to be run. And the reason is because the SCP test itself depends on the ping test. So um, in this case, it wouldn't work. The correct order uh, would be to put ping, and then SSH, and then SCP. So that's how it works on Linux. Um, normally, this is. Right here, for example, I'm, I'm going to put an example how, how that works. If I uh, build the core image minimal uh, image and then I pass this dash C test image, I'm going to go back and replay that. So if I bit big core image minimal and then pass dash C to specify a task and then put test image as my task, uh, assuming I, I'm already, I have already built the image, what's going to happen is that it's going to, the system is going to, bit big is going to run the test image task. As you can see there, uh, it's running on two seconds, seven seconds, and at some point, bear with me a little bit, um, I'm going to get a result from that test. 
uh, from those tests, those tests. Um, and then for example there, it's complaining that I didn't put uh, an SSH server on my image. Uh, so I put ping and SSH and it says the ping test passed and then the SSH test was kept. So the important thing here is that you can see the report of what was passed, what was kept um, and, and what, what failed, right? So that's how it works right now on, on Linux. Um, and that's the sort of the context that you need for this. Um, so I've implemented the test image boot patterns in Open Embedded, and this is because tests need a synchronous communication between the, the, the host and the target. And in the test image class, you can see the uh, examples on, on how to use those. In the example there, uh, I think I'm, uh, if I have a web server running on, on an embedded device or something and my user is a web server, I'm changing those specific variables. Um, they are they are prepended with uh, send and search, depending on uh, if it's something that the uh, host will send or search on the output of the target. Uh, and on the QMU runner.py script, which is what we use to run QMU uh, automatically, uh, we can see the defaults are set. And as an example, well, not example, but the defaults are, for example, uh, that you will, to to search for a reach prompt, you will search for the login uh, column string. Your uh, login user would be root, and then your login succeeded will be the uh, a regex uh, like that, and then a command finished uh, regex would look like that as well. So to make it, I know it doesn't uh, make a lot of sense right now, but I'll make it more clear in this uh, example. The so whatever you see on red is coming on the it's it's on the host. Whatever you see on uh, purple, it's on the target. And so the first thing that happens is that the host tells the target to start booting again, whether it is QMU or something, um, or if it if the target is a hardware device, then it just starts booting and the host is reading the output of the boot log. Um, on, the, on the target, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna start booting and at some point, it's gonna get to a login prompt, which is the string that we declared here in these variables. So great, we got a login prompt. At that point, the host is gonna send the root uh, new line uh, string. And then what's gonna happen on the target is gonna, be, is gonna log in and we're gonna get a, uh, a prompt, a root prompt, which is gonna be something like root at something and then pound sign, right? Uh, so what, what that means is that we uh, successfully logged in. So now we're the root user user on the system and and the, the host knows that because it's, it's gonna search for that regex, right? And then at that point, it's gonna um, send commands to, to the target. The target, um, it's gonna execute the command and then it's gonna get another prompt because it the command already finished. Command finished. And then the host will continually uh, just read output. So for example, and uh, if, if we're testing ping, we would uh, at this point would send ping. Uh, we will, uh, the, the target will perform the ping command and then at some point it'll exit and then it'll uh, finish. And we're gonna read the output of that. And then if we're gonna assert it looks as the way that we expect it to be, then that means the ping command uh, succeeded. So that's how a test worked. Um, that's all great, but that's all in Linux. So I'm going to switch a little bit and I'm going to talk about the bare metal tool chains and applications on the Octo project. Um, so this is, if you wanted to run an, an example of a bare metal application uh, using the Octo project, these are these are the following the, the steps that you have to follow. Uh, first, you clone the, the Pocky repository. You see the into Pocky. This is all normal. This is this is what you usually do to build the Linux. Uh, you show, you source the environment, and then you add your um, the meta skeleton layer, which comes from um, the Pocky repository as well. You can either use the bitbig layers command, or you can just add it to the, your bblayers.conf. Either way would work. And then after that, what you're gonna in this case, I'm I'm using the QMU ARM64 machine, so I'm passing that to my local.conf. And very importantly, I'm passing the TCLibsy variable, uh, bare metal. Uh, I'm declaring TCLibsy as bare metal. 
And I'm set, I'm telling the build system that I'm not going to use the C library. It's just going to be a bare metal device. And then after that, you can use the bit pick and then uh, bare metal hello world, which is what uh, the recipe is called. It's on the meta skeleton layer. Uh, you can look at it. It's it's quite simple. Um, after that, after you you're done building, you can just run run QMU just as you would with uh, with the Linux system. And at the very end, you'll get a you now once QMU runs, uh, you'll get a string um, hello a hello world application. In this case, it's hello open embedded. Um, so that's great. Uh, that's all you need to do to run a sample. Uh, bare metal application using the Octo project. Obviously, all dependencies, all the tool chain, everything is is built there, um, and it just works out of the box. Uh, some interesting targets that you can do um, if you're not doing the bare metal uh, Hello World is you can use uh, the bare metal tool chain, metal tool chain target, sorry, which will get you an SDK. Uh, if you do have an application that has dependencies uh, and you do bare metal Hello World, which is my application dash C. Populate SDK, you'll get an SDK uh, with along with the dependency for your application. Um, so so that way people can develop on top of that if you want to. And one very important thing is that if you instead of doing TC libc equals bare metal, if you do TC libc equals new lib, uh, you'll get the new libc library. Which uh, without going into a lot of details, it's a uh, it's a C library that's for embedded devices. Um, it, in again, at a very high level, it contains uh, a lot of weak symbols uh, for the main functions that you would need, and then the libgloss part of the new lib um, source code will have uh, the BSP uh, part of it, so registers and everything would be declared there. So the weak symbols will allow uh, new lib to link. Against your binary, and then libloss would override that, those things, and then you'll get the actual result uh, on your bare metal application. So this is how it looks like. Again, you clone the repository, you cd into the repository, and then you do bit bake bare metal hello world. Uh, the bell system just works uh, the same as as it does with Linux. And I'm gonna go back. This goes too too fast. Um, so, so yeah, it parses the recipe, recipes and, and, and metadata. At this point, I've already built it. So this is building from SD cache, and it, it, that's why it's so fast. But you can see that it's uh, executing the, the different tasks for my specific application. It actually generates an RPM. Um, and if I poke around the deploy directory, I can see in my deploy uh, images in QMRM64, I get a binary, an L file, a uh, manifest, and a QMU boot file. Boot.com uh, file. Um, the QME boot.com uh, file is quite important because it's what allows us to just run run QMU afterwards. E even if you were building a, a normal Linux distribution with this, uh, you'll still get that QME boot.com and it just tells Bitbake how to run, run QMU with arguments to pass, for example. Um, so, for example, there I'm running run QMU and the system already knows what to pass because of that file, in which is generated automatically. You don't have to take care of that. Uh, there's a class in, in, in Open Embedded that allows you to, to the bare metal applications to get this. Um, you can see, for example, there you can see the full command. You can see I'm passing, I think, uh, 128 megabytes of RAM, um, 256 actually. You can see the CPU that I'm using. And well, at the very end, you can see that I, I, I do get the, uh, the string hello open embedded. Um, so that means my application is, is running properly. It was built and run properly. Um, so that's if you want to get started, that's how you um, how you get your bare metal application running on, on QMU Arc 64. Um, so let's say you wanted to do a, 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 something a bit more interesting uh, with a bit more features um, and you want to uh, integrate that with the testing infrastructure that I mentioned before from Linux. Um, so what I did is I, I went to the QMU source code and I got the addresses for the UART, for the RAM, um, for the kernel, and then I went to the uh, developer's manual for uh, ARM. I can see that the, my device is using a UART PL011 uh, device. 
And from there, the important part is what I'm putting there on that table, which is the data register, uh, the flag register, receive status, and, and then the error clear register. So I need those addresses because I'm, I'm gonna um, uh, create my application. This, some of these are already using the bare metal one, as uh, I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And uh, you also need the uh, startup code and the linker script, which uh, a lot of people are not familiar with those things because you usually get those things from the C runtime. So on Linux, you don't have to worry about those things. You, you get them for free. Um, on here, you have you actually have to create those and, and, and let um, let the system know how it's supposed to run your code, basically. This is actually the code for the application that you saw. So it just declares the where the UART uh, address is, and it has a very simple print UART zero function, which only uh, ba basically just passes that character to the driver. Um, until it hits the end of the string. And then I have a C entry function, uh, which calls that print the UART function. And, and then the argument is hello open embedded. Nothing too fancy in there. Um, do note that there's no main function on my C program. In this case, and that's on purpose. Um, in this case, I'm using the C entry function uh, as, my, as my main function. Um, this is the, uh, you can see the linker script on your left and you can see the startup code on your right. Uh, these are coming already from, uh, if you do the Vermeil Hello World, you get these um, as an example where you can add on top. Um, so first, without like uh, at a high level, uh, I got the RAM address from the QMU source code. And then I know that if I'm passing the uh, dash kernel argument to the to QMU, it adds a 0x1000 to it. And then I, the linker script will, will make sure that I get my binary organized correctly. The startup, uh, I'm gonna get the text section from my startup.o file, which is, which is generated from the one on your right. Uh, and all the other sections there, text, uh, read-only data, data BSS. And then I, I get 4K of stack at the end. And then the startup code basically just tells it uh, that if you can, I think you can see my cursor. Uh, if you look here, it's where I'm uh, jumping to the C entry function. So that's how it's gonna know it's gonna have to jump into this function instead of the main one. You could name it main, it's, it's not a problem. But in this, in this case, I uh, on purpose, I, I named it differently. So you could see that you have to change that. Um, so that's a linker script, that's the startup code, and that's the actual code. Um, and again, if you wanted to do that, uh, if you wanted to run that, you'll get um, the hello open embedded uh, string at the end. And this doesn't have to be on QMU. It is on QMU because it's simple, but it just as easily can be on a hardware device. So I am gonna stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna switch my share screen to a terminal. Give me a second. And great, my application is not showing up. Oh, there you go. Okay, I, I hope you can see my screen. I think you can. All right, so this is my terminal. I'm on my Pocky build directory. Um, and again, if I do bit big, bare metal, bare metal, hello world. I'll, uh, in this case, it's not gonna build anything because I already built, but um, just so you can see that that's how you do it. Um, if I go and poke around in the source code, um, if I wanted to modify this and do a, a, a again, a more interesting, um, program um, which uses a, a bit more things than just printing a string. Um, what I want to do is make it play well or, or play nice with the infrastructure that I showed you before, which is expecting a login prompt. It's expecting to get a user. It's expected to get a command. So uh, what I did is that I modified the, um, the C code. I haven't modified the startup code. I just wanna show you that. That stays the same. 
I haven't modified the uh, linker script either. Still the same as well. And so what I did is I modified the, the C code. And one thing to note here, very important, is that I'm using uh, standard int and string, that H. And you're saying, well, this is a bare metal device. How are you using it? Well, that's coming from new live. So this time I'm going to have to use uh, new live as my C library when I'm building. I created this uh, set of macros um, just to explain what I'm getting from, from the ARM developer manual. Basically, they're just addresses and a couple of masks that I'm using um, to, to read and write properly from the uh, UART. I created a couple of functions. Um, quite simple, the putcher UART uh, function, basic, it's basically does the same thing as, as a print one that I showed you before. In this case, it's just using properly the uh, the, the flag register TX, uh, but it's it's printing the characters on the on the UART. Um, the print UART function is actually a wrapper for the putter UART function. And lastly, I have a read UART function because I also want to read what's coming for to me from the target. And it that's just basically reading. It's not it's not too fancy. Uh, and then I have a check command function and my C entry function. I modified a little bit as well. As you can see, it still starts with print UART, and then in this case, I, I switched. Now I'm not using Open Embedded. I'm using Hello uh, Open Source Summit Japan 2020, uh, and then I get into a, a while loop in which I'm I'm keeping uh, I'm reading the UART and then you know uh, checking for a command and 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 stuff like that. So those are the modifications that I have made um, to to the example uh, to the example code. And if I can share this again, sorry. Okay. So, so we now have a um, the bare metal application, which is very simple. This again, coming from Metaskeleton, you should know that that's for as meant to be as an example. Now I have uh, gotten that example and I've modified it to my own needs, and the, the last thing that you need is to create a taste, uh, a test case, or uh, reuse one that already existed. In this case, what I did is that I reuse one. Uh, well, it's open source after all, so we should reuse things. Um, in this case, I'm borrowing the one from coming from the Meta Free Arctos layer. Um, if you wanted to do what I'm doing, um, you would clone uh, the pocket distribution, the pocket repo, sorry. You would clone the Meta Free Arctos layer. You add the Meta Free Arctos layer. Uh, uh, to your bblayers.com, just as you did with the Meta uh, Skeleton. And one important thing is to, uh, so on the Meta FreeRTOS layer, there, there's a test called FreeRTOS uh, Echo. And uh, it's very simple. I made some modifications, but what I wanted to do is that my command is going to be a question mark and a car carriage return. And then um, I am expecting to see uh, success coming from, from, from the other end, right? Uh, so that way I know I can assert and I know that my test gate ran uh, properly. Uh, so this is all the test for, this is all the code, sorry, um, on the test. Uh, it's quite simple, uh, but it, it can be used as an example if you wanted to test something. At least it tells me if uh, the system is, is running properly, it was built and run properly every night. Um, so this is where everything gets um, wired in together. Uh, remember when I showed you at the beginning um, how the uh, how tests run uh, on Linux and how you can override the patterns um, either for when you get a login prompt or the user that you're using and the command succeeded uh, the login succeeded or the command finished. Well, you you put these on your local.conf or one of your conf files, um, and then that's the way how you can override it. So in this case, I'm using, a, again, the machine is my QMU ARM64. I switched my TC libc to new live in server metal. I still inherit the uh, test image class, and I'm declaring the test suites. Um, when, when it was on Linux, I put it auto, and I, then I put ping and SSH. In this case, I'm using the freeartos underscore echo test case. And I'm overriding the following things. Um, I'm expecting, so I, I, the, the host will know the target has booted when it sees the Open Source Summit Japan 2020 string. 
Uh, at that point, the target will send the Yocta project user to it. The, uh, sorry, the host will send that. The target will say welcome because it knows that user. And then every command will be uh, a new line. That's how it will recognize that, right? If I override, override, I override those things, I modified my test case and I modified my code already. So I got all those things together. So what's gonna happen now uh, on the bare metal case, again, the red things are on the host, uh, the purple things are on the target. Um, the host will tell the target to start booting. The target will start booting and then we'll print the OSS J2020 uh, string. Uh, at that point, the host will send Yocta project or YP uh, carriage return. And then the target will say, I know you, welcome. So that means we have logged in, um, at least uh, the, the system thinks that. And then at that point, it's when the command will be uh, executed, right? Um, in this case, I'm substituting the command with what's coming from the test case. Here, I put a, a question mark in there on CMV. So that's that's what's going to happen. Uh, it could have been something else, but I just switched. Uh, I just uh, chose the question mark. And then at that point, um, I'm going to see success because uh, the, the target will know that and it's going to print success. The command will be finished and then the uh, host will be reading the target output and will know everything's fine. Uh, so if you wanted to run that, this is how it would look like. Um, so I'm rebuilding the Bermel application because I modified the code, right? So it doesn't take very long, it's it's quite uh, it's fast. So I first rebuild it and then I pass the test image uh, task to it using dash C. And what's gonna happen in a couple of seconds is that it's running the test image task, as you can see here. And there, you can see the results. It ran the free Artos test um, and it passed. It ran one test. I got success as one. Keep zero, failure zero, error zero. So that's how you test a uh, a bare. That's how you um, make your bare metal application interact properly with the open and better infrastructure for testing. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna be here for a while. Uh, if you if you have questions, uh, please let me know. I don't, okay. Thank you guys for attending.